Hey, hi everyone. Welcome here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this Webflow optimization crash course. Uh, yeah, I think crash course sounds sounds good. <laughs> anyway, so before we dive into the first episode, which is optimizing the fonts, just wanted to kind of give you a quick overview over what exactly is a good mindset for optimizing the Webflow and what is the what is a, an effective strategy. So before we dive into those, let's roll the credits. Why Webflow optimization is a mindset and a strategy. So it's a mindset because when you're looking at your design, you need to know exactly, hey, what assets I need to optimize in order to make the website in order to make the website much easier to use. And also, when you're looking at, the, at your design, you, have, you need to have this keen eye. You know what I mean is, you look at the sections you've designed, so you need to know, hey, this is a section, inside this section I have a div block, inside this div block I have text, I have images. So, before you would ever launch your Webflow project and would start translating your design into a Webflow page, you need to see how every section should be structured. Okay, so we'll, we'll definitely cover that on this course. Now, why Webflow optimization is a strategy? Simply because every time when you translate the design from Figma, from Adobe XD to the Webflow, you kind of, you're doing optimization step by step. So while you're designing and translating all the assets to Webflow, you also need to apply optimization. Good. So let's talk about what we're gonna cover in this large Webflow optimization course. So if you are brand new to Webflow optimization, this course is definitely for you. And even if you already know about how to optimize a Webflow project, then you'll find new tips, you'll find new methodologies on how to optimize your Webflow pages. You'll have to bear with me and watch every single second of this video because we're gonna do, we're gonna follow along with the design. So while we implement the design from Adobe XD to Webflow, we're also gonna optimize every bit, every UI component, every image, every text. The design that we're gonna start implementing today and optimize in the future. So huge thanks to Sara. It's one of our members from the Webflow community on the Facebook. Now she gave me her Webflow side. So here's the Webflow side. This is the original one. It's in Swedish. <laughs> so Sara basically have kind of a online course landing page here and she struggles to optimize it because we have a lot of images, we have different fonts variations, we have illustrations. So we'll cover all of that. Now what I did is I did a small redesign so we can have all the UI components inside the Webflow and we can basically cover everything. So as you can see what I've changed is I've added right here a form. Now optimizing a form for accessibility is an important step. And I also like did some changes here in the CMS. So just so you know guys, what we're gonna build in this entire course, and I think we can move to the fonts, is we're gonna build the navigation. We're gonna talk how to optimize the navigation. Then we're gonna talk about the header section. We're gonna talk about different HTML tags. We'll optimize the full width images. Next, we're, gonna, we're also gonna cover fonts. We'll cover SVG illustrations and how to optimize those, how to properly add them inside the Webflow and have control over them. And we're also gonna talk about some grid layouts here, optimizing the images. And we'll also do optimizing Webflow forms. Also, we'll probably will end up with building a CMS and optimizing a CMS collection. Now, let's see what else we have here. Yeah, and we'll, we'll end up the course by developing the footer of the website and run one last time and audit over our site speed and see what else we can optimize there. Okay, so I think we can get started. So let's talk about the fonts. Let me go to my Adobe XD project right here. Let me switch to the design. And I've used a Google font called Rubik. Hope you get it right. So it's Rubik right here. Now, when you optimize your font, you, ha you need to take into consideration one single factor. Images 
account for I would say 60 to 75 percent of your site speed and web fonts count for 15 to 20 percent of your site speed so it's important to optimize not just images but also fonts and you have two ways right here the first way is to optimize the font file that TTF or OTF wherever whatever type whatever format your font file is and secondly is to use system fonts like Helvetica if you're on a Mac or a real Times New Roman Calibri and all of those fonts that you have by default installed on any operating system. Fonts have glimpse. Every letter, every symbol, every special character have glimpse. A glimpse is basically an SVG, it's a vector file and it has a lot of points, a lot of curves and all of those points and curves are basically information inside a glimpse. Now, a font file also have some metadata, like it is an open type, it is a true type. Also, we talk about the encoding, Unicode, and um, all the rest of, of font encoding out there. Let me actually dive into how to optimize a font. So you will need a software called, um, called FontForge. I already have it, and by the way, all the links guys will be available in the video description below along with FAQ section so you can quickly find an answer to your question. Okay, so I have the I have the font forge right here and before I would open up my file, just wanted to show you the sound uh, the font forge website. So the font forge what it does is it open up your font file and it allows you to modify the glimpse, remove the glimpse and optimize your font file. It's available for Windows and also for Mac users. Now because I'm on the Windows, I have this Windows install. So just simply click on that orange button, you go confirm and download and then you click on this download this latest release. Good. You install you install this application. Once you install the application, just simply launch it and you'll see this pop-up dialog. Now inside this pop-up dialog what I want to do is I want to open up my font. So I'm using Rubik and I'm, I have downloaded the Rubik from the Google fonts, right? So I go to Lumos, YouTube, this one, project, fonts and Rubik regular and I hit OK. Now you'll see some warnings right here. Just disregard the warnings. It happens all the time with Google fonts. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna remove the glimpse that we will not use. For example, special characters, different symbols, uh, letters in other languages, right? And before I'm gonna show you how to operate with with the font forge, just wanted to take a moment and tell you guys that we have an article right here about reducing the web font size from web.dev and I will also leave the link in the description so you can fully read and understand how a font is working. Good. Now, the Rubik font, I downloaded it from, so Rubik, I downloaded it from the Google fonts and now the thing here with the Google fonts is you don't want it to add the Google fonts to your Webflow project. Why so? Because every time you load a Google font inside the product settings, Webflow adds the Google API script to your HTML. What this means is it creates additional requests and additional redirects, which kind of hurts your Webflow site speed. Every font variation might be, for example, the light variation, the regular variation, medium, semi bold, bold, black, all of these font variations, they're independent file. So if you have five variations, this means you'll have five different files that your browser will need to access to the Webflow server or to the Google server and take them back and display to the user. So let's dive into the font forge and how to and how to optimize a font. So I have my Rubik regular and by the way, I'm using the Rubik regular and the Rubik medium and try to do your best to stick only with regular and medium. Light font is way too thin and gives you accessibility and readability issues. And for the bold, if, you, if you're gonna use bold variation, then you can simply select your text inside the Webflow and then just simply press Control-B or Command-B to strong that text out. Good.
So we have our font forge right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the glimpse I'm not gonna use. And what you need to do is you have to click on the symbol on the top, not on the gleam, but on the symbol. So with this symbol selected, I think I'm not gonna use this one. So let me let me hold the Alt key. Let me hold actually the Shift key. So it's the Shift key. Holding the Shift key and from there, with these two selected, right click on the symbol, not on the gleam, and clear. Good. So let's actually see what else I will not use. So probably I'll not use these right here because, well, if you delete a symbol or a gleam that you're gonna use, what your browser will do is it will search for this gleam in the system fonts. So if you cannot see, for example, this um, double column in the Rubik font file, it will search for Helvetica or Arial or whatever system font you have. So don't worry about any warnings or messing up the, the font file. What we are trying to do right now is to optimize our font file. So let me select this both because I'm using um, Arial and I think Arial will do a great job of displaying semicolons and double columns. So right click, clear. I think I don't need these brackets right here also and this one and this one. So also this one, this one, this one, this, this. So I'm gonna do right click, clear. Good. Now let's see what else. This I will also probably not use. So clear, these, these, these. Not gonna use these symbols right here. Okay, this copyright probably I'm gonna use this, this one first for the copyright. Okay, so let me just remove all of these. Right click, clear. And now at some point, at some point, FontForge will, will say, hey, wait a second, you're trying to delete some glimpses that are linked to other glimpses in, in this font file. So what you wanna do is you wanna keep the linking, but you wanna say yes to all because we wanna clear this glimpse, but we still wanna keep the symbol linked to another symbol. So hope it makes sense to you guys. So yes to all. Good, wonderful. And I also have this um, symbols right here and special characters. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Let me just scroll a little bit. And to select to select multiple glimpses, what you wanna do is you wanna hold you wanna hold your mouse button. Now I'm using a Wacom tablet, but you wanna hold your mouse button, right? You wanna hold your left click on on the symbol itself, not on the glimp. And you just simply drag all the way till this last glimp you want it to delete. Right click, clear. Same, same warning from the font forge. We click yes to all. Wonderful. This one I think I'm also gonna delete it, so clear. And you should probably do the same. For example, look right here we have a Russian text. So keep in mind that yeah, probably if you have an English website only, you might have traffic from Russian, from Brazil, or whatever country that use some special characters in their language, don't worry about those because what your browser will do, it will replace those fonts with your system font. Let me hold again my left click and drag, drag this out. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one, right click, clear. So you need to do the same for every symbol that you will not use because remember every symbol is every symbol is an SVG illustration that have points, curves. So you want to make sure you remove those glimpses and optimize your font file. So let me just show you how it looks. Let me hit command O or control O to open my optimized font. This is my optimized version. So hit OK. And as you can see, I've removed mostly all of the symbol right here. Remove the Chinese glimpse, right? <laughs> and kind of a cleaned up my my font file. Now, once you remove all of the glimpse you're not gonna use, you're gonna go to File and Generate Font. There is a hotkey for that, Control-Shift-G or Command-Shift-G. So what I'm gonna do, Control-Shift-G to open up the Generate Font dialog. And from here, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna create, of course, a new folder called WOFF2. I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna save my font as web open font 
WOFF2. Guys, this is super important because WOFF2 format is one of the most optimized and compressed format for your font file. And this is this is available for all the major browsers. So if I type can I can I can I use it? This is the WOFF2 and as you can see guys, it's optimized. It's available for all the major browsers. Good. Now let me go back to this dialog in the font forge and what you're going to do is you just simply want to click on generate. We'll say hey non-standard EM size just disregard the warning and click yes. And then it will say hey there's some issues right here you have missing glimpses that are linked together and you're going to cho choose generate. And that's all. It will give you some warnings but just disregard these warnings. As you can see Initially, our Rubik Medium and Rubik Regular was 129 kilobytes, and now the modified version, the optimized version, have only 21 kilobytes for the Rubik Medium and 17 kilobytes for Rubik Regular. Now, this one is the one I've created, but I did not remove all the glimpses. That's it. So, once you do your optimization for the Rubik Regular, you want to do the same thing for Rubik Medium or whatever variation you have. Just please keep in mind, use only Regular and Medium because thin is just simply too thin. It will give you problems with accessibility and readability. And bold, you can always all the time copy the text inside the Webflow and apply the bold style to it. So let me open up my project online course. What I want to do is I want to click on settings to open up the project settings and I want to navigate to the for to the fonts. Good. Now again, this is super important and I'll say one more time. Leave this drop down in peace. Do not use Google fonts because if you want to optimize your site, every time you choose a Google font, it will load the variations, it will load the script, it will create red regs and additional requests you don't want to do. Okay, so what we we're gonna do instead is we have this custom font. So right here we will upload our WOFF2 fonts, our Rubik regular and Rubik medium. So upload, and I'm gonna open up. Let me see. Can I? Oh yeah, wonderful. Let me select both and open. Now Webflow successfully uploaded the fonts. No warnings, no issues. Despite the fact that Webflow asked us to hey, upload TDF, OTF and BOFF, just disregard this message and upload only WOFF2 because that's the most compressed file format for your font. And the last thing we're gonna do, this is super important because later on we'll have problems if we'll not set this up, we have font display swap. So from this drop down menu, we're gonna choose swap. Now what swap means is when your page initially loads, what the browser will do is it will load system fonts for example, a real Times New Roman or Calibri. And then once your page fully loaded, Webflow and the browser will load your custom font. That's why that's why we have this swap right here. So it will basically swap your font on the page load with your system font. And when your page is fully loaded, it will display your custom font. So I'm gonna leave this as swap. I'm gonna choose upload font file and upload font file for the normal variation. I have my both fonts right here and I see that Rubik falls back to sans serif. This means that when the swap, when this play swap will appear, browser will replace my Rubik with a sans serif. This might be a real, this might be a Roboto, it really depends on the operating system you're using. That's all. What we have to do is we have to click publish to selected domains. So that was all. That was all to cover here. Now, as you can see, we've managed to reduce drastically our font file. Yeah. Now, the second option you have right here is if you really wanted to optimize the fonts and the web page load is use system fonts. Now, let me create right here. Let me create right here two heading levels. So we have heading one. And let's say this one will also be heading. This one will be heading two. So the heading one will use. You can do is it will use Rubik, and as you can see, it fully loads. It's in bold, but I can choose from here. Yeah, 
we have the normal and the medium. Now, let me choose medium because I don't love the bold thing. And for the H2 level, I'm gonna choose I'm gonna choose a real. And that's all. Now you can also choose any of the system font. For example, you can even go with system UI. But that's it, that's it guys. So you have both options. The first option it's a lot it's a little bit longer where you have to optimize your font file using font forge. And the second one is to simply use system fonts, web safe fonts that will not load up any additional scripts and additional font file. I know it might take a little bit longer guys, but I promise you that everything we're gonna cover in the very next episodes, we're gonna do step by step and I'm gonna show you in full details how to optimize every bit of UI element you're using inside of Webflow. So if you do have any questions, just let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to reply as quick as I can. And as always, all the links will be available in the description box along with FAQ section so you can quickly find your answer. Finally, feel free to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell to be notified when the next episode will be uploaded. All right, thanks a lot to anybody out there who watched this first episode. I hope it was super informative for you guys. Talk soon. Bye bye.